Hello, and welcome to the Built on Air podcast. Built on Air is a regular podcast where we talk with everyday people and learn about the amazing things they are doing with Airtable. Today's podcast is sponsored by OpenSide, the leading solutions provider for Airtable customers. Check out OpenSide.com to learn more about their products and services that can take your Airtable usage to the next level. Use promo code BUILTONAIR to receive $20 towards any product purchase. In this episode, we're joined by Nicolas Grunier, a developer advocate at Typeform and veteran Airtable custom block builder. As a developer advocate, he helps developers build upon Typeform's existing platform to accomplish advanced or highly specialized use cases. Naturally, when it came time for Typeform to develop one of the first ever custom blocks released to the official blocks library, Nicola was the man to build it. More recently, he built one of the 10 winning projects in the Airtable custom blocks contest, a game changer for e-commerce spaces, his shipping block can take in an order record, retrieve shipping quotes from multiple companies, generate shipping labels from the selected quote, and even track shipments in progress. We discuss how he came up with the idea for the block, how the Custom Blocks API has changed over time, and a look to the future for custom development for both Typeform and Airtable. Awesome. Um, so let me show you first how the table is organized. Um, and the whole idea was to run a dog store uh, where you buy stuff for your dog. Uh, and so we have different items. Uh, we have tutus because why not have a tutu for your dog? Uh, that looks really nice. Uh, we have awesome turtleneck. Uh, and this is a friend running their own store for, for dogs uh, mm -hmm. called Woolwag. They do awesome stuff. So I just borrowed a, a nice photo. Um, and then so they have this is the, the product base. Uh, and then you can run into the gallery. This is like all from what I got into the, the template. So I didn't build anything around this. Just put some nice pictures. Um, they have clients. There's a, a table with clients, um, with the different detail address, where they live, where they, what's the email address. Um, and then they have orders. So there's another table with orders. Mm -hmm. uh, tech, tech, tech. And then for each order, um, we have order line items. Similar thing for each thing that belongs to an order. Um, this is how we know what's going to be part of the shipment. Sure. And so now, as you are going into uh, the different orders, we have here a colon for a tracking number. So this is something that I added. And uh, once you launch the shipping block, the first thing it's going to ask you is going to ask for your Shippo API key. So if you're not familiar with Shippo, Shippo is like an aggregator of carrier, shipping carriers, uh, and it will help you manage all your subscriptions you have with U U USPS, DHL, FedEx, uh, mm -hmm. and they will try to give you the best rate. And they're one of the best API around shipping. Um, and so I didn't want to build specifically for one carrier. Uh, so this is why it was interesting to, to build with, a, with a, an API like them. Um, so you first put your uh, API key um, there. Uh, you, you give a name to yourself. What is the name of your company? Uh, you put where you're shipping from. Uh, you decide where you track orders. Uh, so this is one of the, the question I had on like how we make this uh, flexible with uh, the way the bases are organized. Um, so we select this table. We select the line items, uh, the column where we track the status, and the column where we track the tracking number. And so now we're done with this. And um, we have a couple of orders uh, that have already a tracking number. So we can go on it and it will give us some details. So we know we're shipping from San Francisco. And uh, in this case, it gets into Chicago for some reason. Uh, oh, yes, because that was the thing. Uh, I don't have a real Shippo account. <laughs> so I had to play with test, test data. Uh, and uh, they have some hard-coded uh, status code. Uh, and this is what Shippo Transit is and Shippo Delivered is. Um, so sure. the, ad the addresses are not the real addresses that we have here, sadly. Um, so for them, they, they ship to Chicago. But it was a good way to have the different states of, uh, of an order. Um, and so here you can see all different steps that are happening to your order, uh, where they started from and how far they've been and where they are. Um, and then to make a difference, this is an order that has been delivered um, and you see all the different steps again. 
the last part was uh, once you have an order uh, and it doesn't have a shipping number, it was to create a shipping number and create this label. Um, so this is the, the way it looks. Again, I'm not good at UI, um, but you get a new shipment, you create a new shipment, uh, you find a colon for the client name. So here we have a client name colon. Uh, mm -hmm. We ship that to, again, we pick on the, on the colon. So we try to do the mapping only on columns that could be relevant um, and on a specific type. Um, and which column can does line items. Here you have the details of the different uh, things you're going to ship in this order uh, with the cost, the quantity, things. Um, then you get a quote. And this is calling, again, now the Shipo API to be like, OK, I have this shipment from San Francisco to uh, Morgan Hill in California. Um, this is what's in the box, uh, how much space it takes. Tell me what are the prices. And here it gives you three different options tells you uh, how long it takes, tells you what is the price, and uh, trying to give you which one is the cheapest, which one is the fastest, and which one has the best value. Uh, so you pick one, you click create a shipping label, and now here, there is a shipping uh, number that has been added to your uh, listing. There is uh, the shipping label here, uh, which is an example uh, you can't real, really use this number yet uh, that you can just print and uh, put it on your package. And it has a tracking URL. And because it's a fake tracking URL, because this is a, just a testing number, it's not related to any packages. But in a real case here, uh, you can just go and find the package and see where it is. And, um, and I think that's it. And so now as you're going to click on this, it will go through the same thing and uh, give you the, the real update. Uh, about this shipment. Excellent. Um, I know we're working with test data, but it's um, it's very clear to me how you would you would in actuality be pulling from all of these different fields and cutting down the process. I imagine it would take to get quotes from any of these major. Um, you know, shipping companies and depending on the size of the business that you're working with, um, sometimes you might be shipping locally and sometimes you might be shipping internationally. And so this is critical, I would imagine, from a systems operations perspective. Um, what inspired you to make this block specifically? Great question. Um, I think for me, I, I took the problem in a different way. Um, I. Um, I look at the APIs that I really want to work with. Uh, I'm a developer and uh, I'm, I love APIs and there are some APIs that I didn't get a chance to hack with yet. Yeah. And Shimpo has been one of them for a while. I, I know they've been around and they were uh, doing great on the, the shipping industry. And one of my motivation was like, okay, what can I do with this? But I also looked at uh, examples of what people are building with their table. And one of the things they do is running this small uh, e-commerce shops. Um, and um, that was a hint that I had. I was like, maybe that's something that people could use. And to validate the idea, I asked on the, on the dev post forum or the, uh, the discussion part, I was like, Are, do people use Airtable to run e-commerce for the listing, for uh, the orderings, for all the stuff? And uh, Michelle answered and said, yeah, yes. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. then maybe there is something to do there. Uh, maybe there's a, a pain to solve and um and imagine this is a uh, and i put myself also in the shoes of my of my friend who is running this uh, dog uh, dog wear uh, store where uh, they have to deal with thousands of orders um they do that on another platform they don't do that on our table but uh, uh what what i would like to have if i was running operations on our table and i didn't know how to code i didn't want to make connections with other systems that was the inspiration Great. Um, and I just, I just like seeing um, things like this being made that kind of take away the headache for someone who doesn't feel like they're equipped to get in um, an API, um, even if it's a 
particularly friendly API, if you're not used to JavaScript or React, this might seem daunting to make. And I'm very pleased to see um, all of the things that came out of the contest, particularly because they're all open source. So um, from just a base level, so many great things have been made that, you know, you could just plug and play almost. Now there is at the moment, um, the transition, I guess, of um, you make a custom block and you want other people to use it, they still have to install Node and React on their machine and run it to release into their own base. And that's a little bit cumbersome. But other than that, um, it's it's so great to see things like these being made. Um, so. And it's, st it's still the very early stage. Uh, it is. It's still in beta. So it's it's understandable. But. I'm I'm waiting for the day where it's um, you know as plug and play as like the real blocks, if you will, the quote unquote in the blocks library, or even something like the uh, Airtable universe. Eventually, I mean, if you've seen what they've done for bases and the templates and all stuff, mm -hmm. this is probably where it's going after and uh, what they're looking for. Uh, now that they have an ecosystem of blocks builder, uh, there's definitely a, an opportunity for this. So as someone who's seen it from its inception almost, where there was no UI components, and because I've built um, my own blocks, I can recognize um, a box when I see one. Um, a box is a particular component. So um, now that you've seen it in its current iteration, uh, you know, we're, I don't know, six months into the public version of the custom blocks beta, do you have any um, wish list items for its next stage, perhaps for its final release or beta part two? I, I will say for what I've built, um, I haven't seen uh, any limitation. Um, one of the things that was, that was a bit limiting for me, and um, I will go through this uh, experience again uh, here was um, the, I remember here, this this part that was the, the recall mm -hmm. uh, way. So like, this is a UI that's given by your table. So you just yep. give them an ID, uh, if I remember well, an ID is somewhere in a table and it would just like give you this view. Um, I remember this was confusing and there's probably a better ways of, of dealing with this. Um, and that's, that's something like, that's a feedback that I gave to the team and that's something they were aware of and that's something they're probably already working on. Uh, but otherwise, I think compared to other platform, it's already pretty advanced. Um, and mm -hmm. there, there are already a lot of things in place, uh, everything around uh, dealing with the configuration. Um, so uh, if, you, if you haven't built a block, um, I can store all the settings into your session for you. I don't have to deal with database. I don't have to deal uh, with uh, having my own server for this. Um, mm -hmm. So this is very practical. Uh, this hasn't doesn't exist on other platforms, so it's it's a bit harder to use. Um, so I can say that this is pretty pretty advanced. Um, I don't, so I don't think I have anything on the wish list. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure maybe I'm sure you do. Uh, but for me, for what I've done, I'm, I haven't been limited too much on it. And uh, and again, I'm not a, I'm not a heavy React user for so I do really basic stuff. Yeah. The only things I do in React at the moment are custom blocks and I, I have a couple ideas but I'm I'm with you in that I, the, the few ideas that I have had I was able to execute them um, in relatively short order I mean I started using react for the contest and so I think I know you didn't have that luxury for type forms block but for the rest of us who just kind of started for the purpose of the contest just the having the groundwork laid for all of these UI components and use records and, mm -hmm. use, and so many examples of use state um, for React, it made learning React in general pretty easy um, or less daunting, I, I'll say. Um, having this is kind of like a prompt, if you will. Um, so I, yeah, <laughs> totally, totally agree. Uh, for me, I mean, I'm a developer. Uh, I'm sure you, you've you've done other development as well, but and you know that React was on the side, and this thing from the outside, it's you don't know what it is. People are talking about this, but it's hard to find a real project. 
and it's definitely a good approach and a good thing to get started. I really agree on this. Uh, there's a good direction and there's a good tool set to get started with it. And it's, it's less daunting and less scary for sure. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be glad to hear that. <laughs> Um, just, just excellent. Um, I really, really like shipping and I'm glad that it won. Um, cause I, I remember looking, um, like the, the period after the contest had ended and, um, when winners are announced, there's, you could search. It wasn't, wasn't quite easy to find, but you could kind of find some things that had been submitted. And I remember coming across shipping and also table beat. I'm so upset table beat didn't win because it was so excellent. I don't know if you've seen it, but they remind me what it was. Yeah. Table beat turned your sheet into, it made beats depending on your, your column and row setup. And it was so cool. I was like, this has to win for wild card. And I was so upset for them. Uh, I loved it, but I also found shipping and I was like, this is genius. <laughs> of course, of course you would, you would want this. And of course it would be a block. Um, and so I don't know. I, I, I appreciate that people were able to find those. Well, of course this should be a block type use cases and were able to execute them in relatively short order. I think that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of things that um, they are going to be used, like things that are going to come to mind very quickly um, that we have on other ecosystems. Um, things to check an email address, uh, things to add an email to uh, a sequence of, e of a marketing flow, like connecting with other things. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's probably a lot of, uh, of things around custom, custom blocks. Uh, some <laughs> things are really only for a specific company, a specific use case. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're not really main for the marketplace because, as you said, people have a really personalized and their own way of organizing data in Airtable. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's, there's probably a lot of work to be done on uh, consultancy on building custom blocks for those specific use cases. So I know I already, already asked if you had a, a, wish, a wish list, but going off of that idea, there are so many people who specialize in helping people with their, their specific use cases for Airtable as it fits with their larger ecosystem of all the different apps that they use. Um, when it comes to custom blocks, there will be um, developers who will want to make these customized one size does not fit all solutions. And from that perspective, as a de developer yourself, do you have any kind of like points that you think Airtable might want to look out for in terms of how do I make this system work for developers? Yes, um, and it, it, it's actually a good question for, for me and the future of this project as well. Um, and probably that's a question also for you in the block you've built is like, what is the future of this after we've made it open source, after we, we put some effort into this? Um, can we distribute it? Can we monetize it? Uh, can we add new features to it? And, uh, and eventually, can we make a custom version for someone that's using it differently? Mm -hmm. um, and this is a question that all the different ecosystems uh, have had. Um, so if we look at something like WordPress, if we look at Joomla, if we look at other other things like Shopify, um, they, they all have this type of, of things in a relationship with developers. Yeah. Um, on People that make something generic that will work for a lot of different use cases. Um, and then uh, people that are a bit more into the consultancy work and uh, more in the agency work. Uh, and so finding a way to certify them. Um, that's, that's something I'm, I'm not aware of for Airtable. I'm sure they're already working with agencies in the general usage of Airtable. Uh, I don't know if they do anything around the developers yet, uh, but that's probably something they will explore. Yeah, um, I am glad you brought up WordPress because I think they, as you know, I forget what the number is, but they are, something like 10% of the internet is built off of WordPress or some very substantial number considering it's one platform, most of which is something that you could just use for free. And so there's this huge developer community and there's so many well-trusted um, plugins, which would be the equivalent of Airtable's blocks. And you know, you're able to push updates 
to a plugin quite easily and then they could download and update it on their individual sites the end users can and so you bring up a good question what if we want to change something for the the blocks that we've made because i already know if you've looked at if you look at the things that i've submitted that my setup for global config is odd. I, I will just say that. Um, and that I, that's something I could fix very easily, but what is the process of, you know, alerting all the other people who've already implemented it? Here's this updated version. You've brought up an incredible point. So that's, that's something that we'll have to figure out. Um, I, I can tell you because we're lucky with Typeform, we're part of the few blocks that are already distributed. Um, that it's not an easy process on both sides. Uh, so we make changes, uh, but there is a, a whole a QA part uh, with the, the, the Airtable team to, because they want to make sure that uh, it's going to work well, it's going to work for all the different users uh, and in all situations. And th this is where they're really helpful and this is great to have a relationship with them on, on that side. Um, so there is between the time where like, I think I've made something that was working and the time is actually released. Uh, this is probably a two weeks time period where it goes to different people in their team to check the code. Uh, so they, they do a code review, they do a Q QA review uh, and then it gets shipped and distributed to everyone that has the block installed. Mm -hmm. um, but that works well when you have just a couple of people in the platform and they have a specific relationship with those uh, companies. Now that they, if they open the ecosystem, I'm not sure how that's going to work. And they're probably going to find other solutions for this. Um, and I, there's currently, I don't think there's a versioning uh, for blocks. Uh, not that I'm aware. Yeah. So great, though. I think when you update your blog, you update for everyone. <laughs> when it's released for now, I think it's, it's for everyone. Yeah, we have, um, it, it seems right now there's, um, Remix from GitHub. So, you know, all of the newcomers to the block will get the most recent version as it appears on your GitHub. But I think the people who already have an installation on there, there's no kind of way to let them know unless you build into your block some kind of, you know, using GitHub's API, some kind of alert that's like, hey, there is a newer commit to that GitHub. And then there, there might be a way through that. But that seems like a a lot of extra work to do on a per block I, basis. I would just wait for them to provide this and uh, eventually that will happen. <laughs> Agreed. I think now that, I, now that I've said it aloud, I realize that might not be uh, as worth it as it may seem. But once again, just very impressed um, that you were able to build not one, but two of, you know, what I would call the formative blocks for, you know, third party developers and um, an inspiration to us all. Yeah, <laughs> please, please don't. Uh, it's, it's really uh, me playing with a sandbox and uh, being a kid and making some sand castle <laughs> and hopefully it doesn't fall down. Uh, this is, this is just this. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm hyping you up, man. You have to be, <laughs> you have to be a little bit, you've made something great, not once, but twice. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm but, very but proud of you. <laughs> but that's that's very nice. I, I'm really I'm really touched. Uh, uh, but uh, I want to encourage everybody to try this. Mm -hmm. um, it was my first experience with React. Uh, you shouldn't be uh, scared. And um, definitely, and this is where this contest and the team at Airtable has been very helpful. Um, it helped me learn something new and gain confidence in my work. Um, so this is the the right platform to do it. I think. Great takeaway. Um, I recommend as well, everyone, while it's still in beta, come up with an idea and just start. Um, I'm sure you will get something um, out of it because it is, coding is a frustrating process. It's very particular and you really have to pay attention to syntax, but once you're, you're in it, um, it's very, very rewarding. Um, so yeah, go out and learn. Yeah, and if you're looking for ideas, um, there are a community, there is a forum uh, for, for Airtable community was like, oh, why don't you have this feature? Why don't you have this thing? Uh, and people on Twitter and uh, on the Reddit, there's a subreddit as well. Uh, that's very helpful where people ask for features. Um, and some of the things are not going to be built in Airtable because it doesn't make sense. So maybe that's something you can take as a developer and you're like, I want to solve that challenge. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and, and I will make a blog for those people. And you know that you already have some users. So this is also pretty exciting. Exactly. Um, that is an excellent, excellent way of going about it. Just looking at what are people like craving um, as, a, as a feature and starting from there and making that your idea. Um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and showing um, Shipping Block to us. And um, we will put um, in the description links so that we can see um, the project on DevPost. Um, is there anything else that you want to plug? Yeah, no. Uh, th thanks again for, for inviting me. If you're interested to use uh, this uh, block, uh, please feel free to contact me. Uh, let's talk about your issues because this is just something I've made for, for this hack. But uh, I'm really uh, excited to talk about the future of this thing and how eventually we, we can turn this into a, a distributed plugin uh, for the Airtable community. Great. Well, please let us know if you, if you make an updated version. You certainly don't have to, but glad we could see it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to give it a like or hit us up on social at Built On Air. We always love to hear your comments and suggestions. And don't forget to subscribe to catch new episodes when they release. It helps us keep the podcast going.